I think that a good story is one that says uh, in, at many different levels, we're both human beings, we're in this crazy situation called life that we don't really understand. Can we put our heads together and confer about it a little bit at a very high non-bullshitty level? Then all kinds of magic can happen. The idea I love is that a story is kind of a black box. And you're gonna put the reader in there. She's gonna spend some time with this thing that you have made. And when she comes out, what's gonna have happened to her in there is something kind of astonishing. You know, it feels like the curtain's been pulled back and she's gotten a glimpse into a deeper truth. As a story writer, that's not as easy as it sounds. So I would say a bad story is one where you know what the story is and you're sure of it. And you go there uh, with your intentionality fixed in place. Almost like if you went out on a date and noticed that your date uh, had a pile of index cards, you know, and he's looking and this one says, you know, 705, compliment her outfit. 710, ask about the mother. You're gonna feel a little bit condescended to. Now, why would a person do that? Well, because it's scary to be on a date. You know, there's all that mystery and all that, uh, those unexpected moments that are gonna lurch up. Well, likewise in storytelling, why would you be over controlling your material? Because it's scary to not know where it's going. So I've learned that about myself, that I will tend to overmanage a story, you know, saying, well, what I want the story to do is this. And the story is saying, I'm sorry, but I just can't do that. I just don't wanna, I can't. So the better state in my experience is to have some idea of what the story is. And sometimes it's just the tiniest kernel of um, something that you enjoyed writing. Then once you put it down on the page and write it and rewrite it, it's actually your own discontent with it that in some slow, mysterious way urges it to that higher ground. And often it'll do so in ways that surprise you. So for example, you know, if you said, uh, uh, you know, Frank was an asshole. All right, well, that's got a little bite to it, you know, but it's not, you know, not great writing. But then, so the, the writer mind always says, how so? Frank is an asshole. Okay, how so? Uh, he, Frank, is an asshole because he snapped at the barista. Okay, that's, that's you're making your case, that's good. Why, why do you think he did that? Uh, Frank is an asshole. And, and then when I start to do that, I think that the asshole is in the way. Let's take that out. Let's just go to action. Let's say Frank snapped at the barista who reminded him of his wife, his dead wife. Frank snapped at the barista who reminded him of his dead wife who he dearly loved. Now suddenly you're, in, you're into a whole different world from Frank as an asshole to Frank as a guy who has the capacity for real love and what was denied him, it, it broke him, you know? And, th and that wasn't done because I said, oh, I wanna write a compassionate story about a, guy, a, a widower. It was done because the sentences were bothering me, you know? And I think when you pay attention to those senses, your better nature rises up. And so with Frank, I'm coming back a second, third, and fourth time and looking at him. You know, Frank, do you have anything, kind of saying, do you have anything, is there anything about you, Frank, that I'm not noticing? Can you tell me something more about yourself that would make me love you better? And the sentence says, yes, there is. Storytelling, at least from my experience of it, I think it's a stand-in for day-to-day -day life. So when you come to a story with this attitude we've been talking about, which is kind of hopeful, generous, but not too pushy, it's like, 
well, what are you? I don't know. You know, when you try to leave your ideas about the story at the door. Those things are so much like what you do with the person in your life that you love, you know? You come back to them again and again and, and try to um, intuit their real expansiveness and you try to keep them close to you, you try to give them the benefit of the doubt. So in that sense, it is, you know, you could see revision as a sort of, uh, a form of act of love. It's actually love in progress, I guess. As I've gotten older, my view of the world has shifted a little bit. I find life so beautiful and also so hard to pin down, you know. And for me, the process of sitting down to write a story is to keep your eyes open all the time, to keep yourself mystified, and to say, this thing defies systemization. It, it really does. Every story is different. Uh, you, you arrive at it with your tools from the last story, and it says, no, 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 no. That we are all seeing through that. Don't pull out those old tricks on me. You go out in the world, see what it is. It's just as fresh now as it was when you were 18. Go out there and experience it. Come back in befuddled and then try. You know, I don't care how old you are. Do something beautiful.